Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow 3 with another live cast. It's been a long time since I've actually done a live cast, but I'm here again. I was not doing them because, of course, the Temporal Anomalies tournament had been postponed as a result of some replay issues that had come up with Acron. But those replay issues are, for the most part, fixed, and there's definitely a lot of work. If there are any remaining bugs, we've been doing a lot of testing, making sure that's all fixed, and there might be. If there are any other bugs that have come up, well, we have the devs working on it, so should be fine. So yes, Temporal Anomalies will be starting up again next weekend, so the cast will be next Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's January the 29th at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And just to build up for that, we're going to have some replays of games that were played already some time ago. So the first game is going to be between J Raccoon and Nail. Both of which are fairly... Well, Jerrican's a new player. Nail is not as new, but he is... Wait, he is playing against him. So, just gonna sorry, change this to tournament display. So, you actually got their names and everything. So, we see J Raccoon is in the top right corner, in the 4 o'clock position. He's playing Grekum. Nail is in the 11 o'clock position. He is playing CISO. And he is currently setting up his RPs, getting that up for a perfect start, while J Raccoon is pushing his RPs towards the boxes and will be getting very quickly a Faro and then moving his probably moving his Arcticus forward. Getting a Faro, getting Octos for his RPs as well. So both players are getting their RPs set up, and we should have a well, fairly economy-based matches. Most matches tend to be in Akron. You know, get early economy. Stop going out for Nail, going to the 6 o'clock position instead of the... F Actually, I suppose it's 2 o'clock position that J Raccoon's in. Anyway, not going to see J Raccoon in its first pass. It's going to need to take a second pass in order to actually find J Raccoon. On the other hand, J Raccoon is not going to be setting out scouting, most likely. Grekum tends not to scout early game. He is going to be setting up his Octos RPs. This is at the 50 second mark, while Nail has already got his RP set up and, like I said, is already scouting. So J Raccoon is going to be, actually looks like J Raccoon might be a bit ahead, no he's not, he is definitely behind in terms of his economy, but that is normal for Grekum, Grekum does tend to start out a bit behind in economy, he is right now going in slow-mo to get his economy just perfect. A bit surprised he didn't use the menu option for Octo Resource Processor, because Grekum can just build resource processors for Octos, they don't have to worry about building the Octo and then building the RP, but he might have been worried about defense a lot. Anyhow, Nail, on the other hand, is not having to worry about that at all, being that he's playing CISO. Getting an importer up after the 6th RP and building up RPs at the nearby boxes to his main. By the way, this is Void Platform, and in case you haven't seen Void Platform in a while, it has been changed rather recently. Not super recently, about a month or so ago. But it was changed that instead of having resources over here, they've been moved closer to the main base. The main base resources are easier to defend. They used to be all around the main base. And... The base resources, or the out of base resources that were on the right side of the bases, those remain where they were before. And the expansions between the bases, between the mains, have been increased in the middle and decreased on the outer ring. And the inner ring has slightly more boxes than before. Anyhow, J Raccoon is setting up his triads. Actually, no, he's not setting up another triad yet. He's actually getting eight RPs now. Looks like he might be getting more RPs. His Octos had not been set to RP up yet. Okay, one of his Octos is going to scout. No, it's not. It's going to set out for RPs. So, he is setting up RPs. Strangely enough, on the Far Expand... I mean, this is... The thing is, this is the set of boxes that any player should be taking. Just in general. There isn't a lot of reason to take the boxes up here until you've taken the boxes over here. Because the boxes over by the edge of the outer ring are harder to defend. They're further away from your main base, and in this particular case, Nail is on the correct side to actually start destroying those boxes when he starts to attack. Anyway, Nail's about a minute down from there, and his SOP is going to be finding that. It won't be finding the Octo to build the RP yet, because that isn't going to happen for another minute, but he is going to find the base, and he's going to find what J Raccoon is up to, getting more RPs than he is, at least in his main base. But Nail is at the 151 mark, also getting his 8th RP, now in QP, so... Both players are fairly even in economy. Both players aren't really pushing economy very hard either. Nail initially was, but then, but not much more than you would expect any player to do. Just getting six RPs at the start is a typical opener. 
while J Raccoon, like I said, he does have to worry about the stop coming in. And it actually, no, the options that were building the RPs did get intercepted by that special ops, so that is going to be a bit of a problem. And here you see two Faros and an Octo coming. The Octo is going into pro gen mode, that's probably a mistake. But two Seppies are also coming up. So it looks like a Faro Seppi army is going to be attacking Nail, or possibly being used to set up independent triads. I could see one of them being used to set up an independent triad, but both of them being used might be a bit problematic. That might be expanding too quickly. While Nail is going... Yeah, it's kind of awkward now. Nail's in fast forward and J Raccoon is in slow-mo for the most part. So Nail is actually building a factory in between their two bases, so he's going to be... This typical CISO strategy, build proxy factories, it's very common. He's getting a factory up in the middle of the map, getting another importer next to it as well, and he'll be able to use that to quickly get HHCs right now, and once he gets machinery to get Tornads and tanks into J Raccoon's base. Though, one factory is really only useful for HHCs at this point, because by the time you get tanks and Tornads, you usually have enough economy to build up at least three or four factories worth of units at a time. So Nail is just hanging out outside of J Raccoon's base. J Raccoon is, like I said before, getting up his economy in an unsafe expansion, which the Special Ops is intercepting completely now. That economy has is not going to go through. Although, it looks like J Raccoon is still trying. No, never mind. That economy is going to go through because Nail did pull back that SOP. J Raccoon hadn't quite updated to that yet, but J Raccoon does see what's going on. I still think J Raccoon should have put his RPs over in this set of boxes right here because honestly there's no point doing it here until you need to do it at this line of rps there's no point while nail is setting up his rps in the middle of the map as well sorry the between the two bases not in the middle of the map the middle of the map has boxes of its own but no one's setting up there yet and it doesn't look like they're likely to given that both of them are quite focused on getting their units to set up for early attacks and reef is being set up for nail so he's going to only have one of those rps for attacking Though, right now, J Raccoon doesn't have any air units coming up, and he is getting machinery. Sorry, Nail doesn't have any air units coming up. Neither does J Raccoon for that matter, but Nail is getting machinery, and he has machinery back when he, when he is. Machinery is still being res researched, but an ATC is coming down, and J Raccoon will likely end up just responding to this as soon as he sees the glowing red on his timeline. And there we go. So J Raccoon is, in fact, responding to this right now. At the 351 mark, he is... Well, he's back here. He hasn't started to send up his Faros yet. But it doesn't matter, the Faros are close enough that they will detect the ATHC for the Octus to attack. And the Faros now are moving up to attack, so the ATHC will not last long. The ATHC has been destroyed, Special Ops will kill that Octo, but then... No, the Octo is retreating, so the Octo has been saved, it is being pulled back. Just in time for that stop not to kill it. And Advanced Structures is being researched, so J Raccoon will be able to get air units soon. He does have the QP to do it, he just needs to get a Spire, and once that's done, he'll be able to start getting some Seppi Pods, Faro Pods. So he has tons of LC, honestly he could be getting a ton of base class units if it weren't for the lack of chrono energy. But still, he could be getting a ton of base class units right now. So getting a Spire is probably going to be his best option. And he's going to be putting this Octo into progen mode as well, probably to help with regeneration. Base class units in progeneration mode will regenerate health on their own. On top of the Reef, that means that Hawk is going to heal up very quickly. Nail, on the other hand, is about, actually not about a minute and a half up from J Raccoon. He is expanding towards the center of... Sorry, the right side expansion, so the expansion I mentioned you don't usually go to unless you have no reason not to. Now admittedly, in J Raccoon's case, this set of crates is actually further away from Nail than... Sorry, Nail's case, J Raccoon... Sorry, let me start over. J Raccoon's case, these boxes are close to Nail. That's what I was trying to say in the first place. In Nail's case, the boxes, the same line is further away from J Raccoon, so therefore it's going to be easier for Nail to defend that line of RPs than it is for J Raccoon to defend this line of RPs from Nail. Now, J Raccoon is a fair ways in the future, or, well, a minute before the past, he is getting up there, up there, the Seppi Pods. So he will be getting Seppi Pods at the six, about the 69, 7 minute mark. At the 544 mark, he has. Well, yes, as far as up and a Seppi, the Tornado is going to be able to take, make sure it works. These Faros, the Seppi isn't close enough to attack them. And J Raccoon is actually coming back here. He looks like he's planning to build a reef, but I seriously doubt that he's going to be going through with that. There's no point having a reef that far away from his main base. He is pulling actually, he's pulling back. The Tornado is going around. Looks like he's not going to be attacking directly right now. Nail, however, is controlling the Tornado at his point of view, and he is going to be attacking the RPs directly. So Nail is harassing definitely. Getting a SOP around to make sure that J 
Derekun is not expanding, and Derekun is not expanding, so certainly making sure of that. Now the Tornado coming into harass, and the Tornado will be doing a fair amount of damage, shutting down all of these RPs, so Derekun, however, is not going to be phased by this. He does have tons of LC in stock, so he's not going to have to worry about getting slowed down too much. His QP is going to be a big deal once the Tornado gets to the QP RP. And now it goes. So the QP RP is shut down. Derekun has no QP left. He does have 70 bots coming up, and those will be easily able to take care of this Tornado. Derekun, however, is focused about 3 seconds up from that point. He is sending his autos out. Looks like they are being sent to expand to the inner ring of the map. While Nail has expanded... Well, like I said, this expansion is secured. Looks like he is planning to expand here as well with his Marine. So Nail definitely has an economic advantage right now, but he isn't really pushing it as much as he could be. He does have not a lot of reserve. Well, he has okay, lots of LC, but not a lot of QP in stock. And he's probably being QP blocked, but he doesn't have a lot of factors and macrofabs either. Looks like Chrono Energy is currently his biggest restriction. Jumping towards the future, right now it would be a great time to macro, and it looks like that's exactly what he's doing. But he's doing it in one macrofab instead of spreading out between multiple macrofabs, which is an odd decision because he's spending the same amount of resources, but they're coming out. The units are coming out later than they would be otherwise. Yeah, there they go. There's tons of units in the macrofab. Really should be spread across three or four macrofabs with that many units being built. But anyway, Jericho actually did decide to go for this reef in the center of the map. Like I said, I'm not totally confident about it because it's just hanging out there. Admittedly, it is a useful regeneration platform, but I don't see it being useful very much because the main battle is either going to be over here, or it's only going to be over here because this reef is here. Jericoon, if he was to expand here, put resources here for, or RPs here for some reason, like I said, this is the better spot, but if he did put his RPs here, then it would be easier to defend them. But right now, he doesn't have any reason to try to defend that particular point. Nail, on the other hand, is definitely getting up his Mar tanks. Of course, this red time up carries that, but he is getting his Mar tanks, and he is going to be able to just tear down everything that Nail has so far. Sorry, that Jericoon has so far. Nail is... Also getting a ton of tanks. So he's got an army ready to attack once he decides to do so. And J Raccoon is not in a great position to deal with this, but J Raccoon, however, closer to the present, is attacking, directly harassing the main base, however, with Sebibots, stopping some of the QPRPs, but unfortunately for J Raccoon, Nail does have a lot of QP in stock, not enough to build a massive army, but at this point, J Raccoon does not have an economic advantage to begin with, so this harassment is not changing a whole lot, and he is not building any more RPs. So he is in a really bad spot right now. I'm not going to lie, Jericoon is not in a great spot, he is definitely focused on this harassment. Corona putting back his... Corona putting back his bus to try to harass Nail a bit more effectively, I still don't see it being that great of a move, because really, he needs more... Actually, wait, he's building more... He's building more Octos, which will help. He does have this expand into, which is nice. It's just that that's it. Nail has his line outside his base. He has his main, well, his main base is half dried up. He has, actually, you know what? I think they're a bit more even than I thought they were. They are actually more even than I thought they were, but Nail does have a more secure position regardless. Although his RPs and his main base are being heavily damaged. That's heavy. Actually, no, those heavy pods. Maybe that wasn't a bad idea after all. They actually are dealing a fair amount of damage. Like I said, it's not huge because there are reserves, but not as many reserves as Nail would like. However, it doesn't matter. Nail has, this is why I mentioned it, it's not a huge deal, because Nail has a lot of resources in units, while Jericoon just doesn't have a lot of resources. And this reef's buying him a bit of time, so Jericoon actually is going to be getting a bit extra time, but not enough, I don't think. He is getting some far pods, but the Mara tanks, tanks are going to be coming in well before the far pods are done, or right as the far pods get finished, maybe. It looks like they are getting slowed down a bit by that dome, and yeah, the Farpods will be able to finish just in time. So J Raccoon has a bit of a chance of getting through this. There are no detectors in that group, so the, the Farpods cloak. They will be able to attack and actually deal with everything here. They need to cloak, though, and J Raccoon is not cloaking the Farpods. He has not. He has cloaked one of them, but he needs to go back and cloak the other one, because that one needs... Both of them need to be alive. That's the only way that J Raccoon's going to have a snowball's chance of getting out of this. And even then, I think it's already too late. He is cloaking that Farpod. He is sending them forward. And they're going to be able to get rid of the tanks, so they need to focus on the Martex. And no, this Farbot got uncloaked, and it's dead. Oh, that was a terrible move. I don't know why he uncloaked that. It must have been a, that must have been a hockey mistake, because there is no reason to have uncloaked that Farbot. So those, the Martex are just tearing apart everything, getting rid of everything that Jericho had built up so far. And of course, 
Nail has easily another line of Martex coming in from behind there. That, or if you can easily, he has enough resources to do so. And he is definitely building more factors and macrofibs. He's really spreading across the map right now, right as he's getting his killing blow in. So j has no chance of recovering from this point. This is a lot more one-sided than I had thought it was, but yeah, this is, or thought it would be from the description of the replay. But yes, this is a, this is it. I mean, j has nothing he can rebuild with. He is seeing his whole base be destroyed. The only chance he would have had is if he had a legal class unit somewhere or if he had legal class before this all happened, because if he did, then he would be able to build a legal class unit, and then you have Simplot and Farpod, but even with that, Nail's just everywhere. Nail has made it completely hopeless. There is no way Jay Raccoon is getting out of this, so... Jay Raccoon, I apologize, but... Well, it was a nice try. It's just not enough aggression, not enough expansion early on, and the expansion was to an unsafe set of boxes. So Jay Raccoon does not have much chance right now. Nail is, from his point of view, completely victorious. Jay Raccoon did corner port a Faropod back earlier. I don't know if it's going to have much of an effect. I highly doubt it. Just because, even those two Faropods alone, if they had corner ported back, the Chrono Clone to save themselves, they might have had a chance. They might have. And it looks like one of the Faropods is actually being corner ported back to help out, but yeah, that is not going to help. Really, what he'd need is... If he was going to use Fire Pods, he'd need at least six or seven to take care of these Mar Tanks. And honestly, I don't see it. There is some damage actually coming in further in the past. The Green Time Wave... Whoa. You know what? That Green Time Wave is... Hey, that Far... That Far Pod saved everything. Oh! Oh, silly me. I think... Oh, Nail actually went for an Infantry Heavy Strategy. Something... Okay. I apologize. This may end up killing everything. But I need to know what happened. So, Martanks are attacking, and the Farpod with itself is damaging the Martanks. Actually, three far Okay, so there's three Farpods here, and the rest of the tanks and Martanks are too far behind to help out. Nail had not quite advanced with them yet at this point, so the Martanks are being destroyed. At this point, the Octopods will be able to get built up and actually tear apart main. So, a few seconds later, we see that all the Martanks have been destroyed, and the Octopods are alive, so Nail will be able to actually use them. Further in the future, the attacks are not... Sorry, Jero can be able to use them. So Jericho actually managed to come back from this, but it's going to be really hard for him to do much more. He did deal a fair amount of damage with that. He just has now a ton of map control to deal with. Jericho doesn't have the map, and Nail has everything. Jericho is taking care of some of one of Nail's expansions, damaging all the importers quite effectively. Nice little micro trick there. He would have split up the Octos to attack all the importers individually. So nicely done. I mean that. He's certainly pulling back. Wow, so much for my saying it's going to be a steamroll. Looks like Jay Raccoon managed to chronoport himself to safety. So, Jay Raccoon now in a pretty... Well, pretty precarious position nonetheless. Nail still has massive QP advantage, and he is getting gay tech of his own. And Nail does double-checking what's going on, seeing that his forces were destroyed by... Well, we'll be seeing soon his forces were destroyed by Farpod. But at a 14.57 mark, about four minutes up from where Nail was looking... Jericoon has not been attacked since, but Nail is coming near the unplayable pass border. He will be able to take care of this. And. Yeah. Jericoon. Wow. I mean, even if he doesn't win this, that was still pretty handy. I mean, nicely done throwing back the far pod just the right time, just to the right time. Take care of that. Although it looks like Nail's attack got messed up somehow in the process. I'm thinking that the RPs here. I'm not sure if the RPs here being destroyed would have affected anything. I don't think it would have because Nail had a lot of resources in reserve. So it wouldn't make much sense, but it wouldn't be surprised... It would not surprise me if that had some effect. Anyway, here's the half dozen Farbods I was talking about. That is going to be... Although, most of them aren't cloaked. None of them are cloaked right now. But if he does cloak them at the right times, and with this Tornado, there's really no right time. But the right, Tornado's almost dead anyway, so there's no point caring about that Tornado. Tornado's dead, and the Farbods are going to be able to start dealing a fair amount of damage to Nail. And Jericoon also getting weaponry. He does have super weapons right now. And Corona putting back Farpods to help out his Octos that were attacking. Wow, nicely done. So he's helping the Octos attack the importers that are being attacked by Farpods. What he needs, though, is Sepi Paws. Actually, what he really needs at this point is Lego class units. Get an Octopod, and then pull one of your Farpods back, build Sepi Legos. That would be the best thing to do right now, because that would allow him just great freedom. I mean, it would allow him to get Sepi Legos everywhere. Sepi Legos are a great harassment and siege tool for Grekim. 
And right now, in the current metagame, they're considered the best unit Grekum has. Easily the best unit Grekum has. So that would be Jerakun's best bet at this point. And right now he is doing a lot of good work with the Chronoport, sending back Chronoport Farpods to the center of the map to deal with the RPs that are built already. So Nail is losing a lot of expansions before he even gets them. Jerakun is definitely doing what Grekum does best. The only downside is he doesn't have a lot of economy to do it with. He only has these five RPs, and once those drain, although he's getting more RPs on the corresponding Outer Ring expansion, but he is still behind an economy nail. Really, he has Gate Tech, he has a Chrono Porter. It's just a matter of time before Nail decides, you know what, forget this playing around, I'm gonna start killing him. Because he can do that. He can really do that any time. Once Nail wants to, and Nail has just done that, Chrono Porting back see, Chrono Board back a mech, okay, not a whole lot of units yet, but he will be able to Chrono Board a lot of units later on. So he Chrono Board back this one mech, and that will be... Well, that will be useful somewhat, but against the Far Boss, I don't see it being especially useful. What he needs right now is a much larger army going back to the past to actually deal with everything. That's what's necessary. Get a large army, kill everything, and then we can worry about making sure that Stuff's alive. It looks like Nail is. Nail is, like I said, still in an advantageous position. He really needs to try to make use of this, and his biggest bottleneck right now is LC. Actually, Chrono Energy, really. But LC is definitely one of his bigger bottlenecks on top of that. And, you know what, actually, I'm hoping I didn't screw up Nail's position in time. But anyway, yeah, one of his biggest bottlenecks right now is his. LC. Because Nail is not really in a great position to actually use that LC around the map, so really there's not a whole lot. Wow, okay, so yeah, there's not a whole lot that Nail has to worry about once he gets back into the present at least, although I'm a bit worried that he may supposed to be in the present because I hit edit replay earlier to get the observer thing working. Okay, now he's getting back to the playable pass, so hopefully nothing got lost that was really important to Nail because, of course, Edit Replay is on, because I wanted to check out some stuff for Observers. Shouldn't change too much, but I did mention that was a small risk. So, if the replay does screw up, it's my fault. I apologize. Screwed up my own show, apparently. But, I will try to avoid selecting units in general, just to make sure that I don't follow them with a Chronoport, which, obviously, if that happens, would cause... Well, would cause issues with you, with players just going far back in the playable past. Doesn't really matter though, Nail is definitely in the unplayable past, he is definitely doing what he appears to be doing. As far as I'm aware, he is not... Doesn't look like he would be in a position to actually start doing stuff other than attacking with the Lancer! Lancer, ho, oh, and Lancer's gonna die. Actually, you know what? No, the Lancer has some chance. More Lancers are coming in as well. He doesn't have a lot of energy to do this with, so it's not gonna be easy. And Jerrigan is actually doing a really good job pulling back. You know what? He's actually doing a really good job coming back. Like I said, he really does need Lego class units, but even without Legos, he is doing a good job regaining map control and getting himself in a position where he's actually going to be able to start building up. What he needs right now is to get more RPs around the map. That's what he really needs, is just tons and tons of RPs. But even with the units he has, he's doing pretty well. Now, of course, both players are near the unplayable pass, so they don't have a lot of orders left. As you can see, Jericho only has four orders available, and Nail is completely used up in his orders right now. So that's one of the main reasons both players aren't really doing a whole lot, is because they simply can't. They're too far in the past to do a whole lot, and they haven't jumped up to the present to do it. It's, I know I mention all the time, macro in the present, macro in the present, but it is a hard thing to do. I'm not going to lie. It's really difficult to move focus away from the near unplayable past, and you also are worried that your opponent's going to do stuff that'll end up nullifying your present orders. Not a huge deal. You still should macro in the present for the most part, because you'll be able to correct if you have to. But it doesn't matter. Nail is setting up more units to attack with. He does have a... Like I said, he has his Chrono Porter set up. He has... Farpods in his main base being destroyed. So, J-Raccoon trying to Chrono Port Farpods into the main base, but to no avail. That Farpod was useless. I think J-Raccoon actually cancelled that. I don't see a Chrono Port arrival on the timeline, or departure on the timeline even. So, I think that's been cancelled already. That Farpod was a total waste if it actually was used, and J-Raccoon is... Like I said, he is building up a bit. He is getting a Farapod to go into pro-generation mode. Okay, he just needs the Octopod in there and then he gets Sepi Legos. Then he'll be good. Nail, on the other hand, is just... Hanging out here. 
So he's getting more, he's getting a larger army, getting himself built up for, like I said, he has very little chrono energy left, so. He's getting himself built up for a big attack, but he doesn't have the chrono energy to do it yet. Once he does, though, he will be in a great spot. He just needs to have the chrono, chrono energy, and that will be basically the end of J-Raccoon, because J-Raccoon right now isn't pushing a whole lot, and I'm a bit worried that I may have screwed something up by the edit replay command that I had done earlier. I think I did. Okay, Nail, Nail is fine, but J-Raccoon, I think I screwed him up somehow. And that's starting to really worry me, because I think I messed up, I think I messed up this replay. So I can't blame the game now. I appear to have, yeah. Shit. So yeah, Nail is going to be... Well, I so said Nail is in a great position. Really, he just needs to attack now. I'm surprised he hasn't done that yet. He is going into the present, and he is able to macro in the present, of course. Which he is definitely doing. He is getting tons of units in the present. So, like I said, it's just a matter of him attacking and then... And turning Smart Idol on, too. Good idea. But it's just a matter of him attacking, and then he'll be set. J-Raccoon really is... Losing steam. So yeah, J. Raccoon, okay. So yeah, I must have screwed something up when I did the edit replay. I apologize, viewers, because that was not intended. But it's quite possible that I followed a Corona port wrong or something like that. So yeah, I apologize for that. That is... Well, that's pretty much it. So yeah. J. Raccoon looks like he did... manage to, in the actual game, get himself into a good position, but still lose momentum. Nail destroying him at some point. I mean, Nail, from his point of view, is... or had tried to deal damage. I mean, like I said, I'm a bit surprised. This attack here... Nail never really touched it since. I don't know if that was actually getting through in the main game, but... I don't know. Anyway, I'm just gonna stop this now because it's getting kind of embarrassing. So I apologize for that being kind of iffy, but... Next game should... I'll, I'm pretty sure I don't need to worry about anything related to that. So, wait, no, not you, you. Anyway, next replay is going to be between... I shall just, sorry, I'll just gonna shut off the stream for a second, just so that it's easier for YouTube. So, I'm gonna shut off the stream for now, and I'll come back in a couple seconds, so see you guys in a couple